Joseph Black, chemist and physicist. His discovery has led us to a greater understanding of science and influenced the work of great inventors like James Watt. Joseph Black, you're a man who is well known in Edinburgh society. However, do you feel that your professional reputation may be undermined by the company you keep? Of an evening, I may pass the time in theological, philosophical and literary debate in one of Edinburgh's many clubs with friends and colleagues such as Adam Smith, David Hume, James Hutton, James Watt and Alexander Carlyle. Such distinguished company only reinforces my professional reputation as a physician and university professor in the field of chemistry, which is my life's passion. You have discovered what you call latent heat. This concept is very difficult for the non-scientist like myself to understand. Are you actually able to explain this in simple terms? Of course. Every trade has its own language, and science is no different. Latent heat is common in everyday life and can be explained in a way which is clear to everyone. For example, I have discovered that when water is heated, it doesn't immediately turn to steam. It first absorbs the heat without heating up. This latent heat is at the heart of thermochemistry, the use of heat in science. This theory has been used to great effect by my colleague James Watt in the development of the power needed to drive his steam engine. You've also discovered what you call specific heat. Quite frankly, this just sounds like scientific jargon. If the ordinary man was able to understand what this was, would it be of any interest to him anyway? It certainly would. James Watt first sparked my interest in what happens to objects when they are heated. And I have discovered that different substances require different levels of heat to raise their temperatures. Uh, for example, it takes eight times more heat to raise the temperature of magnesium than it takes to heat lead. And this temperature is what I call magnesium's specific heat. The greater the specific heat of an object, the more energy it takes to raise its temperature. And here, science is put to use in everyday life without most people being aware of it. When heating a substance, we will obviously choose one with a lower specific heat as it takes less energy and is therefore the more efficient and economical substance to use. Do you never feel you are wasting your life on matters which are of no interest or use to anybody other than scientists? Not at all. The human race must learn and develop if it is to thrive and survive. And my work has contributed greatly to our understanding of the world around us. My work has been crucial to unlocking the secrets of chemistry, which in turn explains so many of the things that we take for granted. And we can then use this knowledge to our advantage. The air we breathe, for example, uh, my experiments in the burning of magnesium have led to a better understanding of this air and its makeup. <laughs> for many years, we assumed that air was only one gas, but no longer since my discovery of what I call fixed air and science now calls carbon dioxide. Isolating carbon dioxide in a pure state showed that the air we breathe is not an element, but made up of many different things. And now that we know what we breathe and what it is composed of, we can now use this knowledge to develop our understanding of our own bodies and the atmosphere in which we live. You claim that your passion for chemistry is undertaken for the benefit of all mankind. Very noble principles, sir. However, you are by no stretch of the imagination a poor man, and your so-called passion has not exactly reduced you to poverty. Sir, I have never claimed to sacrifice all for my art. Science may be my passion, but it is also my career. And as well as being a professor of chemistry, I make a well-earned 
and well-deserved living as a physician and doctor, which has not come without personal sacrifice and dedication. I am an eminent medic and first physician to King George III in Scotland, holding the posts of Regius Professor in the Practice of Medicine, Professor of Anatomy and Botany, and Professor of Medicine, all at the University of Glasgow. You hold important posts at Glasgow and Edinburgh universities and use these establishments for your research. However, I would suggest that you simply use these seats of learning as your very own scientific playground. Do these universities actually benefit from your association? These universities have invited me to use their facilities on the strength of my research and discoveries, and they hope that any advances made on their premises will assure that university even greater academic recognition. I lecture five days a week for five months of the year to 200 students per day. And although I receive an income of three guineas from each student, my work at the university is unsalaried. As a teacher, I am both popular and effective. My lectures are practical demonstrations, illustrated by experiments based on my own current research. And what, Joseph Black, is your contribution to society, your legacy to mankind? I have been personally responsible for the discoveries of latent heat, specific heat, and carbon dioxide, which have revolutionized scientific thinking. In turn, this has increased our understanding of the world in which we live and breathe. These discoveries have also inspired engineers like James Watt in the development of the steam engine. Many of my 5,000 students have gone on to hold chairs of chemistry in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Cambridge and Oxford, and many have made significant contributions to science. Perhaps my legacy can be summed up in the words of the great chemist Lavoisier, who described himself as the most zealous admirer of the depth of my genius and of the important revolutions which my discoveries have caused in the sciences. Hmm.